So processor technology is applied in every smartphone, in digital cameras, in TVs, uh, gaming consoles, but also smart meters and many more devices. So how does cloud and AI provide your device with faster and better experiences, release after release? Learn all ins and outs about how ARM, the processor IP and solution provider, innovate faster and migrate it to the cloud from Mark Galbraith, and he's the head of productivity engineering at ARM, as we dive into all the details and the topics today. Welcome, Mark. Hi. So ARM provides processor IP and technology inside many different products. Can you explain a little bit more about what ARM is doing, what they're trying to achieve, but especially what's the role of cloud in this approach? So there are really sort of two primary reasons for uh, moving to the cloud. Uh, the first is really, as we look at our, uh, our engineering teams, it's enabling our engineering teams to be more productive, efficient, uh, and agile in their approach. Uh, prior to uh, enabling ARM to burst into the cloud, uh, we were working with a fixed capacity on-prem computer state. Um, and as we run our projects, um, the compute needed by engineering varies over time, and it doesn't easily fit into a f fixed uh, capacity of state. Uh, and, then, and then when we choose to just grow that state on its own, then it's, that's a typically a four to six month uh, lead time. Um, and then when you're not needing those servers, they're then sitting idle. So cloud enables us to quickly ramp up the compute that we need when we need it, and then ramp it down again. Uh, the, second, the second primary reason for, uh, for taking, uh, to, taking our business into the cloud is really looking at the business opportunities uh, for the ARM ecosystem uh, as well. So from our um, EDA partners uh, developing their roadmaps uh, on ARM-based servers through to our licensees who can develop their products on ARM-based cloud service, uh, servers, realizing the same benefits uh, that we are. Yeah, and cost is important, of course, but on the other hand, innovation, I think, in your industry is key. It evolves very, very rapidly. Um, so how did the shift to cloud help you to innovate faster? And maybe you can give some examples. Yeah, so the shift to cloud has been really, really important for, for innovation. Uh, since our engineers are no longer having to wait for uh, compute resources to be available, um, this frees them up to innovate, improving their workflows and enabling them to accelerate the project schedules. And these deliver more powerful results to their customers more quickly uh, and cost-effectively than ever before. And we found that the use of the, the ARM-based Graviton2 instances has helped reduce our operational costs uh, by around 30% for our physical core. Uh, one of the other aspects that we've seen is, is a huge improvement in turnaround time for our simulations. And this is really due to the, the ability to run uh, massively parallel, means that we've seen from six or up to 10 times uh, improvement in throughput uh, compared uh, to, to, to working on-prem. And this has been through the use of these ARM-based Graviton2 instances. Yeah, so you saw already the cost reduction, on the other hand, the speed of innovation. Are there other aspects as well which benefited ARM for moving into the cloud? Well, what's been really fantastic is we've, we've gained the opportunity to scale the projects when we need it, uh, very quickly being able to add additional capacity but without impacting uh, other, other projects. This also gave us an unexpected benefit of reducing the stress in the engineering teams. So where there's a last minute change, then it's, uh, it's now, uh, it's really just a question of budget and not a question of schedule. Uh, one of the other things that we learned is also there are different ways uh, to get started on your cloud journey. And it really sort of depends on your, on your use case. So the easiest way to get started is effectively doing a, a lift and shift which basically involves taking your existing workflows and then replicating them in the cloud. Other ways of doing it are to lift, modify, and shift, where you make optimizations uh, during your transformation. And then you can also go cloud native, where you really redesign your workflow uh, for the cloud. But the best part is that you can change your approach as you learn more uh, about cloud and you get more experience, and then you can really start to optimize on the, the opportunities that cloud provides. And we see um, high-performance computing growing quite steeply, I think. More and more workloads are in different industries applicable right now. So what kind of tips do you have for other organizations who have to 
bring their workloads also to high performance computing, but also want to do this in the cloud. Yeah, I mean, it really starts with you know what you want to achieve. You know, what are your business objectives? Uh, and, and for us, the, the starting point there was looking at that um, engineering agility, efficiency, and productivity. And then we wanted to combine that with the desire to run our workloads uh, on ARM servers, enabling ARM ecosystem. Uh, so these were really the, the, the primary drivers for us. Um, I think it's also, of course, very important to get senior executive uh, buy-in uh, for, for a change like this. And um, for us, that was a, it was a very clear uh, decision to make. And then as you, as you think about how you're going through this transformation, then it's important to look at your, your operating model. And then for us, as we looked at moving from this environment where we had very much fixed on-prem capacity and how we did our, our planning for, for that, but now we can start to think of it uh, as, as getting the capacity that we need uh, when we need it. Um, when, when you're looking at then thinking of those, uh, those business objectives, then you can also take a, a phased approach. Uh, and, and this is really so that you get some, you know, the immediate benefits sooner. So it's uh, because we're making a change, you want to align uh, your business needs uh, with the benefits and, and getting them as quickly as possible. But you don't need to do it all in one go. Um, a good thing is to start with taking maybe one or two workloads, uh, burst to the cloud with them, build some capability, get some quick wins, and then before you take on some more complex use cases. Yeah, and you have created already this type of quick wins, but can you explain as well what's next? What kind of new things can we expect in the near future from ARM? So we're, we're really taking a, a multi-year um, approach to our, our journey to the cloud. Uh, so we started with our, our heaviest EDA workloads, and these are sort of typically um, digital and analog simulations. Um, and they, they account for more than half of our HPC usage. The next steps are looking at additional um, hardware flows. Really, you know, as we start to look at additional verification use cases, uh, also looking at some of those back-end use cases, uh, synthesis, place and route, static time analysis. And then beyond that, we're also looking at our, our software build and test uh, work, workloads as well. As well, um, The aim here is really to encompass a full uh, design flow uh, using ARM servers uh, in the cloud and, and thinking about how that then lowers the barrier uh, of entry for, uh, for startups, for example, uh, where there's no data centers needed. And so really what we think is you know, demonstrating what we can achieve uh, using ARM-based servers uh, in the cloud. Um, this, this is a way to uh, enable um, benefits for the, the semiconductor industry and also other industries beyond can also get this benefit. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Thank you for sharing some details about your innovation path, but also your cloud migration. I think it's interesting to see how yeah, this innovative industry, how you can even thrive faster and better with cloud. Thank you for, for sharing your insights. Thanks. And for the audience, thank you for watching, and we see you next time.